significant stories, significant entrepreneurs. I'm your host, Fran McNeil, and joining me today in the studio is Mark Blair, CFP, and that's a registered symbol, with Mark Blair Wealth Management. Mark, welcome to the show. How are you doing today? I'm doing very well, and thank you. You're welcome. Financial planning is a very important topic for all kinds of consumers, regardless of age. And many people, unfortunately, wait until the last minute um, to engage in financial planning. Yet studies have shown that those that engage in financial planning early are more successful. Mark, you're in this business. Share with me, why is that true? Well, you know, a sad statistic is that only one-third of households even have a household budget. That's a scary statistic. That really is. Uh, and even fewer, a smaller proportion, engage in financial planning yeah. or work with a CPA to navigate through their financial concerns. So as a result, uh, it's a very grim picture for people when they're older. The median savings of people who are 62 years old is $108,000. But, and this is good news, bad news, mm -hmm they're going to live on average 22 more years. So making that spread and live a good life, it's a difficult situation. Uh, so on average, families save 5.7% of their income. That should be closer to 10 or 15%. Uh, and what we find is that it's good to, to engage in the planning process to see where you are at any stage of your life if you haven't done it. Mm -hmm. but. I try to get the message to young people to start early because if you understand the situation and your prospects, you can make a few small changes and then let that ride during your career and you won't really have a problem with retirement. Mm -hmm. Even in today's age where defined contribution plans uh, are the thing that's happening rather than defined uh, benefits. Mm -hmm. which offered much more security for people. So let's take a step back. What I hear you saying is planning and saving is really something that's critical to do and creating a budget is a first step. Absolutely. Mm -hmm. uh, of course you always want to live within your means, mm -hmm. uh, although lots of us don't and that the average credit card debt for families is $8,000. But there's also an aspect of a household budget is often overlooked, and that is, yes, you have all your household expenses, but we also need to put money aside for saving that we're not spending, that we're putting someplace, perhaps through a payroll deduction or something like that, so that we don't even see it. It just goes to a Vanguard account or something like that mm -hmm. uh, and adds up over time. Uh, that's a very important message to get to young people. So let's talk about that. You are passionate about young people thinking about financial planning and saving. And you, in fact, have two daughters. I do. So <laughs> I do. you understand the younger generation. How does a parent begin to communicate this concept and display the behaviors that really set young people up for a successful future? Well. The short answer is to involve them in the process. What does uh, that look like? Well, it means that when you go to the ATM to withdraw cash, you talk to your child about, well, this is coming out, but how does it go in? Ooh. How, how do I have to go to work and produce satisfaction in my boss or client or customer mm -hmm. so that they pay me so that I can put the money in, so that we can spend it to take care of the things that we care about? Uh, at an appropriate age, uh, eight years old or older, set up a bank account for them. Mm -hmm. uh, piggy banks for saving, investing, donating, and spending on everyday things that they would like is another good practice. Uh, embodiment is where it's at. You know, schools, colleges are now offering classes in financial education, financial literacy is the term. But I'm more concerned with financial competence. Let's talk about that. That's a distinction. Financial planning, financial literacy, financial awareness. What is financial competence in your definition? Well, 
uh, you know, I think some people think about financial planning and that some magician does something for me and then I have this artifact and I, I'm supposed to look at it and do something. Uh, it's not like that uh, from our perspective. What we try to do is, of course, help people understand what can be a seemingly complex situation with social security and pension and you know all these different elements and the tax laws are changing absolutely and all that but all of that you can gather that up in a sensible format see where you are and play that over play that out over time see you know how does the future look realizing that it's only a plan it's just a vision okay mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. but that shows you where we can make changes now, how do you involve your kids in that so that they can get the embodiment? The, the book learning is great, right. but it's when they go to the bank, when they look at a statement, mm -hmm. when they decide, well, do I want this iPhone game or do I want to go to a movie with my friends? Introducing them and letting them practice making choices as to what they're going to do with their money uh, is so vitally important. Uh, bringing people to choice mm. in a nutshell. Great, um, great. So speaking of choice, how did you choose to become an entrepreneur in this way? How did you choose, what was the significant story or path that brought you to starting your own firm? Excellent question. Uh, when, I w when I went to college, I was privileged to go to the Wharton School, and mm -hmm. I had decided to study entrepreneurship and management. And it turns out that with my favorite professor, Chris Mater, we started a consulting business during my senior year. I had been his teaching assistant, and uh, long story short, I went from that book learning and case studies and things ah, that you do right. to actually doing it. Mm -hmm. At, at the very beginning of my career, so that was uh, that's what I what I mean when I say embodiment. Uh, I knew that I could do that. Now in my career, I've worked for other companies, small companies, fairly large companies, uh, and started several businesses of my own. Mm -hmm. But again, just going beyond the book learning and the understanding that you get from talking about something to doing it. Uh, is very important and so that's what we try to communicate with people. The financial plan is really just the starting point of a set of rich conversations mm -hmm. and actions that they can take once we've alerted them to, you know, hey, this would really be in your best interest if you uh, take this particular action. Right, right, right. A payroll deduction that goes into an investment account mm -hmm. automatically and you just get used to not having that money show up. You don't even see it, right, right. unless you check your pay stub. Right. Uh, and then you get your statements and you can watch it grow. And the same thing for kids when they put their allowance into their account and they get the statements or they go online, right. which is happening you know, exactly. kids right. all, all the <laughs> They're time. They're checking their phone. Yes, right. they can check their balances and they can see it grow. And there's a real good feel-good factor for the kids. Mm -hmm. uh, I'm so proud of my older daughter. She worked in New York for 15 months, managed to not only live within her means, but save a substantial amount of money. And, you know, it's, it was pretty amazing. And uh, so she picked up on the value of saving, and now she's taking a very frugal approach to gear up for a career as a nurse practitioner. Mm. And she's done the research and understands the you know, the outlook for nursing and nurse practitioners and so forth. So that's another aspect of the conversations that I have with clients is not only what is your financial situation and what are some moves that you can make to improve your situation wherever you're beginning, mm -hmm. uh, but also the key drivers of wealth really are work and career. Mm -hmm. And in today's environment, there's so much less that we can take for granted in the workplace. Right. So the conversations of design of what are other offers that you might make or in your current situation, how do you advance and so forth. So gently helping people examine those topics and think a little bit outside the box. Makes a difference. It, it makes a difference for them, but it also makes a difference for me because 
I feel energized. That's what I think I was put here to do. Mm -hmm. uh, and so I'm very happy to be able to indulge my passion by helping people take steps, learn how to take those steps on their own, not mm -hmm. just do it for them. Right, right. That is so important. And that's part of the financial competence. Let's talk a little bit about this award here. You brought it today. Why is this war award significant to you? And what does it mean for your customers? Well, um, this represents recognition by the public in this area mm -hmm. that as a financial advisor, I was voted the best of the main line. Uh, so I'm very grateful for that appreciation. But it's, you know, trust is such an important factor in, in the financial planning business. Mm -hmm. People don't like to talk about money. They have all these assessments about, I don't have enough, I'm not doing a good enough job, or people shouldn't know, even my kids shouldn't know. Oh, uh, right. So recognition like this is reassuring to people that, hey, other people have worked with this person and it's been helpful and good, mm -hmm. or they wouldn't have voted for me. Mm -hmm. uh, that's another reason why I pursued the Certified Financial Planner designation. Mm -hmm. It's an extensive uh, agenda of learning and it requires experience and uh, commitment to ethics, but it's also known as the gold standard of mm -hmm. financial planning. And it follows a set approach, so all financial certified financial planning professionals follow that approach. So there's a predictability there and an accountability. Mm -hmm. um, uh, so, and the ethical part's very important, but trusting the person that you're working with as a trusted advisor, and you know, money is up close and personal for people. Sure, sure. Uh, so that's why I think this is significant. And mm -hmm. I'm grateful for the appreciation that people have shown. Mm -hmm. Right. We, earlier this week, had lunch. And during lunch, you really shared really your passion for learning um, and your commitment to help others learn. Um, and you've been really kind of adventurous in your life in terms mm. of some of your experiences. So as we close out our interview, I'd love for folks to have a sense of who is Mark. Um, what's a, a journey that you've taken or an experience that you've had that really shares you and also is tied to how you present yourself and how you serve your clients? Mm. Well, I, what pops into my mind is a two-week journey with some friends uh, to India mm -hmm. that we took uh, five years ago. And we went there to explore on the ground the ashrams and other institutions uh, by some of the prophets or gurus of the Hindu mystical belief system called Advaita Vedanta. Mm -hmm which is uh, also known as non-dualism. That's really what that means. Mm -hmm. uh, and so that's a profoundly different way of seeing the world, that we're all connected mm -hmm. and that we don't have to view ourselves as always trying to control everything. We are definitely agents working together, mm -hmm. but uh, the suffering that a lot of people engage in and that I used to engage in uh, all the time uh, was connected to this notion that I have to be in control that, mm -hmm. and that's an illusion. Right. Uh, right. And I came across that understanding over a period of about 10 years uh, because some of my early teachers oriented me to learning to learn mm -hmm. and being okay with not knowing, making mistakes, getting coaching, and moving up the ladder of competence from I don't know anything to a beginner to minimally competent. And in some areas, people become masters or virtuosos. Right. Uh, but it's a process. And you can take on pretty much anything if you want, if you choose to. Uh, and so that, is again, is something that I try to impart to my clients is mm -hmm. that it doesn't matter if you don't know how to be a nurse practitioner. You right. know, you right. you studied Mandarin Chinese. You know, you're <laughs> fluent in that, but now you want to do this. But 
what are the building blocks? What are the baby steps? What are the obstacles that you're going to run into that you can get help with? Wonderful. Wonderful. So. Mark, it's been a pleasure having you on the show. Thanks for sharing your philosophy. Thanks for sharing your commitment. And thanks for really being a leader in the world of financial competence, financial planning, and helping others really think about growing their wealth and their success by protecting their family. Mm -hmm. Thank you. Thank you. Significant stories, significant entrepreneurs. Right here on the main line in the Philadelphia area. Please continue to watch as we uncover and discover how saving, planning, and your future is right at your fingertips. Thank you.